Chris and Dandari. We've got a massive review show of round two, and then we're into the preview of round three. So there's been a lot of questions that I've uh, fielded from the Dressing Gown Diary fans. Firstly, have I been wearing an actual dressing gown? Well, those that are observant will see that I, one, am tonight, and two, have been previously. What do you think, cameraman? Thumbs up for the dressing gown? There it is. So let's have a look at the uh, round two games. Ireland, well, they really did up the game. This was pitched as a Grand Slam game and it did not disappoint for the uh, neutrals. Ireland, France really going hammer and tongs. France in it for a lot of the game, but yet came up short. Hugo Keenan scoring one of the greatest tries I've seen at international rugby. The deception, the runs, the lines, the angles. Ireland have got it all going on. France have got some questions about the defence, the way they've been playing recently. To give you some idea, they've uh, conceded 24 points against Italy, 32 against Ireland. That is not good enough for an international team that expects to go deep into the World Cup at the end of this uh, this year. Uh, Ireland, Hugo Keenan, the, the lines of running, you know, it's all we're at. France, we talk about the defensive lines. They, they were in the game for elements, but have, have teams just worked out how to play against their kicking game? The way Ireland played, you'd question that that is the case. But Ireland are a very, very sophisticated team. The second game saw Scotland absolutely dispatch the Welsh. This was a game that Scotland really needed to win against a bogey team of theirs. They weren't sure whether they had enough. But they did show enough. There were times that uh, Wales could have done considerably better. Rio Dyer should have scored just before half time. Would it have affected the overall uh, result of the game? Probably not. Do you, when you when you see Finn Russell play with such uh, excitement and such enthusiasm, he looked up the the offload he uh, executed. He looked up. He saw Ken Owens in front of him. Managed to get his arms free. Offload out the back door. A brilliant bit of rugby. That's what people pay money to watch. The uh, Scotland march on, though. I, I, we'll look through the stats when we come a bit later, but when was the last time they won three games? I think you've got to go a long way back, three games in a row. Wales were woeful. They were out-thought. They were out-fought. They were out-played. They are literally in dire straits. And it's no surprise that the troubles that the uh, Welsh Rugby Union saw this week with Threats of player strikes and the England game being cancelled, delayed. They are in a lot of trouble. The third game of that, uh, the second round of games, saw England uh, victorious 31 14 against Italy. England needed a win. It didn't matter how it came, but it was very, very, very pragmatic. It was limited skill set, limited ability. Italy didn't really show up in the first half, but England did enough. Can England fans be happy with that performance? I think the noise that came out of Twickenham shows you that they were delighted that there was a win, but weren't really enthusiastic about how they got to the win. Italy, they were never really in it. They performed so well against France in the first round of matches, but this was just one too far. They just couldn't seem to string it together in the first half, but yet in the second half did show some performance, but England were already out of sight. This weekend, well... The Dressing Gown Diary, let me tell you this for those fans that have, uh, have lumped on. We're currently on Freddy's Flutter. We are seven games in a row. Can we make it eight? We're now into the preview of round three. So I bumped into a dear friend of mine this evening, Woody. Who knew that he was a dressing gown diary aficionado? Loved it. Was chatting to his wife, Sasha, about it. She didn't have a Scooby. That's what it's all about, being the dressing gown diary uh, fans. So let's look at what we've got coming up. We've got Italy, uh, Ireland open up the, uh, the round three. Italy will be looking at this fixture thinking, well, we're playing the Grand Slam potential uh, potential champions here. This is going to be tricky. Ireland have made a load of changes. Sexton is out. He is unfit, so he's not selected. Italy, however, brought back Brex. He's in at uh, 13 channel and their defence fires when he is playing. Italy, though, they're, they're, they've, they've lost 22 out of 23 against Ireland. You know, what are we expecting from this situation? Uh, Italy have also lost 23 on the bounce at home. Can we expect anything from this? 
We can't expect to win, but we'll come back to Freddie's flutter because I expect Ireland to, you know, not score the points that they should on the handicap. Let's move on. The second game of the weekend it is absolutely massive because the is going to roar. Well, I don't know about that. The heart might tell me that, but unfortunately, Wales are in massive strife. There's changes all over the park. North is jettisoned from the squad, as is Liam Williams. Uh, Gatlin throwing, it feels like he's throwing cards in the air to see where they land, and I'll just pick those players. England showing up, they have to win this game. There's more on this game for England than there is for Wales. Wales are in strife. They expect to lose. Wales are on the uh, losing streak. They've lost seven out of nine against England in this sort of last nine games. So there are low expectations about how they will do. England have to perform. Wales, low expectations. The, the strike clearly has a, a, a big effect. Um, but it'll be interesting to see whether England can actually develop a game plan over, uh, you know, the Italy game was very much functional. It was very, uh, uh, the, the kicking game that England hadn't showed for a long time. Lots of grubbers. Will they display the same? It, it, un, un, unclear at this moment, but certainly the expectation is that England will put 20, 15, 20 points on Wales. Whether it happens, though, we're not sure. The last game of the weekend sees uh, Scotland travel to Paris. Can they repeat their victory in Paris from 2021? It would be enormous. It would be three games on the bounce. I'm not sure that Scotland have ever done this. I've tried to look back in this stats and I can't find it. This would be enormous for Scotland. France is struggling somewhat. It, it's all there for Scotland to do it. So there's a lot of rugby going on this weekend. But Freddie's flutter to try and make it to eight out of eight. Yes, it's an even money bet. Yes, you can double your money. And those that followed every bet, well, they would have done very well. I'm actually going to back. Oh, sorry. I'm not. Freddie's going to back Italy on the handicap against Ireland. You can currently get 21 and a half points. So what that means, and Woody asked me this question. So if you open a bookmaker's account, an 888 probably is our preferred bookmaker. You will find in the uh, uh, rugby betting, you'll find a choice then of handicap betting. And they will give you a points difference for the, uh, the team that they think will struggle. And in this situation, it will be Italy. So they will offer you Italy plus about 21 and a half points. And it should be an even bet. Get involved. I fancy Italy to do quite well. Ireland have made a load of changes. It'll be a tight game. Look, this is the Dressing Gown Diary for six halves of rugby. You get involved. Enjoy it all. Over.